Hey guys, thanks for checking out this video and this video series I'm going to be putting up. I've, I've been putting up some compilation videos, and it's just been games of me playing and uh, some of my wins, some of my losses, just some funny kills, etc, etc. So I've done 10 of those, and kind of what I want to do now is switch over and start to just put in some videos of me playing PUBG and a lot of the strategy that goes into it. And I've sort of come into my own as far as how I implement my strategy and the result from that has actually been more consistent chicken dinners. Uh, and I do play a lot of solo and I play uh, only first person perspective. I don't play third person so I don't know that my strategy would really work all that well for third person but I just wanted to kind of show what it is that I do because I know that there's so many millions of people who are playing PUBG and there's a lot of people who can't really put in the, the, the time and sort of the dedication to become ridiculously good at like using the car 98 um, using a bunch of the, the, the weapons that some of these guys who are just professionals, you know, they make it look so easy before the rest of us. It's not. So for the rest of us, it really does help if you've got a really good working strategy. And the truth is that there are so many people out there who do. So the key thing is to just kind of remember there's no real wrong way to play PUBG. You know, you got a hundred people who are jumping into a game. Therefore, you've got a hundred different ways that people are going to approach and what they do and why they do it. So all I'm wanting to do is just kind of show what it is that I do that allows me to consistently get into the top 10 and I'm always in a position to pull out the chicken dinner. You know, I don't always get it. Uh, I'm not one of the greatest PUBG players of all time. Uh, I'm, I'm in no way, shape, or form am I saying that, but um, I am regularly getting chicken dinners. And so that's just kind of what I wanted to share with uh, some people out there who might be saying, like, you know, I need a better strategy or, you know, I need to do some things. Um, and that's just what this is about. This is just what it's going to be. And just don't misunderstand and me trying to tell you, like, you're you need to play only this way and you need to just do this it's no 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 no. play however it is you want and um that's gonna be that so without further ado let's jump straight into a game so the plane had basically kind of come down this way i dropped here first um, I don't typically go to the prison. I don't like going to the prison um, I don't like going into an area where I'm sort of um pinned down it's really easy for people to come in and uh, uh, just kind of corner you in the prison so I, I tend to avoid it so typically what I do is I like coming into this area um, there's a lot of cover everywhere if you come over here excuse me if you come over here you have your options of Milta you have Milta power you've got Lipovka uh, but you've also got the mansion, and now that they've put in the forest behind the mansion, it works really, really well uh, to be able to get down there and then to get back there to have cover. So what we're going to do is we are going to fast forward, and I'm going to show you kind of where I end up. So what I did here, well, there's some artillery. I kind of wish that they would take out the red zone. I don't really see the point of it, but it is what it is. So I've worked my way down from up here, worked down, worked over to here. And while I'm in here, I realize, okay, so the next circle is going to be down here. So I'll end up moving back. So fast forwarding, we're getting back. Now here's the thing, at this point I have not engaged anybody and again this is sort of counter to the way that a lot of people play it. They want to jump into highly populated areas, they want to get into those fights and there's nothing wrong with that and you know I'm not saying you know I will do that occasionally it's just not the most fun for me. It's just not the most fun and you know, however, especially when you're playing a multiplayer game, you need to play the way that you're going to enjoy it. So this is just sort of the way that I play. So let's see. Uh, there's still nobody that I'm seeing at this point, but what we'll end up doing is um, moving over to the the uh, going west. I'm gonna go ahead and 
set this to two, times two. So here I am down here. I'm moving along. I've got these guys up here. And I'm not going to be able to focus a ton on some of these other guys on some of the fights that they have. Uh, if I had more time, I would do it, try to do more in depth. But when I see sort of good things that somebody does or bad things uh, that are really noticeable, um, I will point those out. Now, it is interesting kind of what happens here. Rad Scott comes up, and this guy right on top. He knows that this guy's down here and he is getting nailed and he's getting nailed by the guy that's right over here. Getting nailed right over here by this guy who had him sighted in. Funny thing is Rad Scott's like, man, I don't know who he was shooting at, but I'm out of here. So he, t he takes off, not really knowing exactly where that guy got shot. So he's gone and then this guy actually will work his way up. And they never encounter one another. As close as they were, they never see it. So from here, and I'm down here now in VW East. And he makes an appearance later in the game. So what I'm doing at this point, I still have not encountered anybody. Now I could hear gunshots coming along. But I knew where the next circle was, and I wanted to work my way to the north. Now, what I like to do when I'm playing is I never like to be in the circle. What I like to do is have to move um, because it allows me to sort of get into positions that I don't think either someone's going to be or it's a position where I think I'm going to have the advantage if I have to encounter somebody. So right here I'm working my way to the top of the hill because I'm a big believer in anytime you can get into an elevated position that's where you want to be so I'm working my way here I'm gonna end up seeing this guy over on the other side I'm gonna see Cowbane and here's a mistake that a lot of people will end up making when they sort of get into this situation so I'm coming along here and I scoped this guy down. Now, when I first started to play the game, I would have taken that shot. I would have just taken that shot without really thinking about it too much. Like, what are the ramifications if I start shooting at this guy? But the ramification is simple, is I'm not going to kill this guy. You know, I'm not using a car 98. I don't have an exact uh, line of sight. So, again, right here, I can take the shot if the guy faces me. But what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to use him as bait. So I'm just going to use him to kind of work down the hill because typically what happens is people do not look behind them. They usually don't look in an area that they just left because they're not thinking about somebody being right behind them, trailing them. But that's exactly what I'm doing. So I get all the way down here, get into the circle, and I'll, I know that this guy is right up here. So we're going to set it to regular time. So here I am. Oh, no, this isn't me. This is a cowbang. So I know that this guy is right over here. This is what I know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for him. I'm going to scope him out a little bit. But I know there he is. So I switch up to my AKM. Boom, boom, boom. Take the guy down. I'm unaware that Duke Gomer is over there at the moment. Now, here's where this guy makes a mistake. He knows that I'm somewhere in the area that he's looking. He knows that I'm over there because he heard the gunshots. But he kind of decides that he's going to start looking elsewhere. And it's not inherently bad that he's looking elsewhere. The problem is he knows that I'm the closest threat. And that somebody is right over there. And he kind of disregards me and starts paying attention elsewhere. Now, he keeps looking because he keeps hoping that he's going to see me. But he's uh, prone on the ground, so he doesn't. So now he sees this guy right here. And so he starts drawing the attention right there. So he's just now focused there. Now he'll look again. He keeps looking left. Now, what I'm doing at the moment is I'm also crawling. Now, I'm also crawling in the shade over here. 
And the reason I use, I try to crawl and always stick to the shade is I wear all black, so it's a lot harder to see me. And you'll end up seeing what I mean here in a minute. So I'm coming along, and I know that I'm going to start looking, and all of a sudden I see Duke Gomer, and I see him. So I decide, all right, well, let's go get this guy. And the advantage I've got over him at that point is I am now elevated up, and I'm basically only going to get headshots on him. So he definitely sees me first. Uh, he even gets his shots off first because he could hear me coming, and then he sees me. But the problem is I know where he's at, so as soon as I start firing, he's going to be an easy, easy kill. So we get down to three of us. And I'm trying to work my way around here. Now, I can hear at this point that the grenade's going off. So I know that the last two guys know where each other is. And then I also realize, okay, well, I can hear them off in the distance. So when I hear them off in the distance, what I know is that they aren't close by. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of rewind this just a, just a little tiny bit. So you can sort of see the interaction that takes place here. Do it from third person. Now this guy he took a big hit, but he's healed back up. And VW East, he chucks a grenade. It's not going to be enough, and they back up, and then it's just going to be who gets off the, the shots. Now he takes enough damage that he's got to lay down, and he's got to lay down and heal up. Now this is what gives me the amount of time. Now you saw where I went and laid down. Remember, I'm wearing all black. You can see from this guy's perspective, he's looking for me, and he's doing a good job in looking for me, but he's not finding me. So if you're in that situation, the first thing that sh should really kind of go through your head is, oh, this guy's in um, the shadows. And let's look at it again here real quick. And what we're going to do is, and the amount of time that it's taken, I've made it to the shadows, I've laid down in the shadows, and I'm going to let you see it from um, the half times, just so you can kind of see for yourself why this guy did not see me. Now, I'm not saying that you need to wear all black. The, the, I, I love the fact that there are so many different kind of outfits that you can wear in the game. Um, I just wear black because it's just part of my strategy. It's just what I do. So you know, obviously, where I'm at. You can see my little name popping up there, but you can't see me. Now, I see this guy hopping around. It's only at the very end. He still didn't know exactly where I was. He just knew that I, he was taking fire, and that was going to be it. He was going to be <laughs> just, unfortunately, not a bad player at all. Um, he just ended up not knowing exactly where I was and sort of paid the price there for that. Alrighty, so in this game, again, it's also on Aaron Gall. Um, I end up getting um, several kills. Now, this ends up being somewhat of a unique game. And the reason it's sort of a unique game is because I never actually got into a firefight with really anybody in the game, as you'll end up seeing. Um, I have the element of surprise every single time I get into a fight. So I never really run into any real danger uh, getting into a fight and it's just sort of the strategy that I used and where I ended up putting myself and uh, how I did it so what we're gonna do is we'll go ahead and we'll fast forward through here uh, two, 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 two. we're gonna set it to two times and I end up jumping over here. We end up having a northern circle. I like to jump into this little stretch right here. The reason I like to do that is because I can usually get and raid uh, and try to get some uh, good loot before I, I have to sort of move out and get into a fight. So 
what I done is uh, I jumped down here, grabbed the stuff, and I'm just working my way over here. And I'm also close to the road, so I can usually find a vehicle if I have to end up getting to the island or I got to get to the other side of the map. Uh, and I really don't have to fight anybody to get to a vehicle. So typically, uh, a lot of people will go to Gatka. And so when they go to Gatka, um, you know that there's usually fights that are taking place, but Gatka is a pretty big little area, a lot of buildings there, so you don't really have to worry about um, someone from Gatka like running up uh, north, uh, running up this way. Uh, they tend to stay down there. Do do do. So I end up working my way over to these buildings right here, and I try to raid them really quick. And there is someone who will be making an appearance here in a minute. And the person who ends up showing up makes a mistake. And I will show you the mistake that they end up making. Because uh, it's something that usually most people don't do. Uh, but I'm positive, you know, I can't 100% say that this is the mistake the guy made, but I'm pretty sure it is. So. I also try to always grab that particular helmet, that or the level 3 helmet, obviously, because they're the darkest and it shows up, uh, or doesn't show up, in the uh, shadows, which is where I like to end up being. So, at this point, I am still kind of raiding. Uh, I'm trying to move over to the scar, but we got this guy, Dinkus615, and the fuzzy, the fuzzly bear, and... Fuzzly Bear ends up, I, he does not come to where I'm at. He actually goes over here, and I end up looking because I can hear him. And I'm looking at the guy just to see if he's coming over to me, and he's not. So I'm continuing to raid at this point, but little do I know that Dinkus is on his way up to where I'm at. Now, the mistake that I'm positive Dinkus made is he did not have the volume up on his uh, headphones or if he wasn't using headphones because I start to come out here and I can hear him at this point I can hear that there's somebody around and now I end up seeing him so I'm making as much noise as he is but he's not hearing me I'm hearing him and I end up getting the guy down pretty quick and I'm positive, even because I was live streaming this game, and um, I'm saying there in the stream, like, okay, I can hear somebody, somebody's near me right now, but I, I don't know where exactly, and that guy never skipped a beat. He just kept going where he was going, and that was pretty much it. So, I'm trying to go a little bit slow because I want to see where this next circle is. I end up doubling back because I want the circle to hit because I want to know where I'm going to go before I just take off. So at this point, I'm looking at my map. I'm setting a marker, and I set my marker up here. And I end up saying, hey to Ken. <laughs> and uh, he was still shooting at me at this point. He actually hits me. <laughs> Like, I don't even know what gun the guy was using, but uh, he was still hitting me. It's probably an SKS or something. But anyway, so I end up moving up to, up to here. And let's get back to where I'm at. Now, where I'm at, this guy will make an appearance. Now, to try to explain where I'm at and what I'm doing. Um, obviously, you can see where the circle is. Okay, now the, now the next circle hits, and that's what I was really kind of waiting on. I wanted to see where's the next circle, because I know I'm going to have to move, uh, and I would, was afraid I was going to have to move all the way over here, and if I was, I was going to go back and get the car that I ditched, because I never leave the car too far away from me. Uh, I put it in a spot where if I have to go get it, go get it. But at the same time, what you don't want to do is keep the car right next to you. So, I have positioned myself right here, and I decide there's no reason for me to move into the circle right now. I've got a ton of time left, um, 
you know, there's still over a minute to go before this next one. And the sort of the key thing right here, and I'm just going to pause it real quick. If you see where I'm positioned, what I'm doing is I'm looking down over this valley because I can tell from where the circle is and where the circle had been that there's really no way for anybody to come from up in this area down to where I'm at. If they're going to be up here, they're going to move up to the shooting range, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That it's more likely that I'm going to see somebody coming from this area right down here. Like this is what makes the most sense. But the other thing is going to be right here for anyone that was like inside Georgia Pole uh, for them to move up to here, then to move to here. And that's exactly what this guy did. He didn't go from here to here, but he did was somewhere down here. Hits these these little houses, and now he's moving across. So just the, where I've positioned myself, I'm going to have kind of free reign to see anybody coming up over this area. And that's exactly what I end up doing to Ice 082. Now, it's just sort of bad luck for this guy. Now, I would have heard him. And I ended up did, you know, I, I heard him to begin with. But even if he had come behind me, uh, I would have heard him. So I see him walk right by me. I get up. And I get the guy down. And there really wasn't a mistake on this guy's part. It really wasn't. This is a wide open terrain. So for him not to see me right there. You know, this guy didn't do anything wrong. This is just, you know, I was in position. I put myself in the position to catch somebody, and sure enough, I did. So even if he had gone up behind me, I would have heard it, and I would have gotten up and kind of moved north and gotten them right up here uh, with the plane. And that's the other thing. You know, when I position myself on this hill, I don't put myself up here because I don't want to be seen by somebody over in the distance. So at this point... And we'll fast forward. So at this point, okay, I've got a kill count of two. We're down to 17 players. I know where this next circle is. I'm still raiding that guy and just trying to get everything. And I had gone back after I raided him, and I went right back to the spot that I had been in because I thought there's still a chance that someone is still going to be coming up from this area. turns out that there wasn't anybody. So once the circle starts moving in, you know, I'm giving it as long as I can before I move because I know the terrain, so I'm not going to move up until I absolutely positively have to move up. So I'm going to move up, get into the circle, and now I'm just going to progress. Now is when, you know, we go from 17 down to 16, and people just start kind of dropping like flies, uh, which is pretty typical when you basically get to this uh, circle uh, and the next one even more so so usually by the time this circle is set uh, with the blue line coming into it you know you'll be at maybe seven maybe eight players at the most rarely will you be in double digits at this point so something else that I'm doing right now and let's find me all right so you can see where I'm positioned. Now, the reason I've put myself right here is what a lot of people like to do is, uh, what I like to do, is they will hug the blue line. And so they know that it will come in the slowest, the closer the blue line is to the next circle. So what they'll do is to give themselves some room is they'll hug the blue line, run up the side. So what I've done is I've sort of positioned myself to be right in between the blue line and the next circle just hoping that I would kind of catch somebody trying to come up. Now, it turns out nobody came up, but that's a good strategy to use to kind of pick somebody off because a lot of people will do that. So when you're in that position, take advantage of it. So we're still set at two times, and here I am running up. And again, I always try to get into the shadows, always try to get into the shadows. And I always try to be on some kind of an incline as well uh, if I can. So I try to avoid the shooting gallery. I try to avoid uh, that hill because it's so sparse. Uh, it's easy to, uh, to get killed. So, well, the Fursley bear, he went down. So I'm now crawling into the next circle and 
the reason I will crawl a lot is because it does make it harder for you to be seen. But I've also been on this little bit of an incline. So I've got, uh, I think, a 4-scope or an 8-scope um, with one of my scars. And so I don't know if that's the weapon I got out or not. It doesn't really matter. I pull it up here, though. No, it's just a 4-scope. <clears throat> or maybe that is an 8-scope. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Actually, it is a 4-scope. And I kind of just keep looking. So sure enough, you know, we're down to six people. That circle's done. So I, again, I get lucky with the circle at this point because I can kind of see that I'm going to be able to crawl into the next circle if I need to. I see that guy get taken out over there. Now we're down to five people. So I'm going to slow it down just a little bit so you can kind of see something that happens. So we're looking at it from my perspective, obviously, and what we're doing is we're looking and what you'll notice is I pull up my 8 scope because I can hear all these shots ringing out on the opposite side of where the circle is. So I know where at least one person is. Now there's only five of us, so there's three other people unaccounted for. Now here's the thing, guys. I'm going to end up seeing this guy over there. But I do not want to take him out yet. The reason I don't want to take him out yet is because he is busy shooting other people. My main concern with this guy across from me is not being seen by him. I don't need to take him out. I don't need to take him out just yet. I know where he's at. He doesn't know where I'm at. I know his general area. Um, I know that I can sight him in because I don't need an 8 scope. I can use a 4 scope uh, at this point for this circle. So all I'm trying to do is just make sure that I'm not seen at this point. So I'm moving down and I'm trying to use the trees right in front of me. And I'm using the trees so that the guy across from me can't see me. So now I'm trying to scope out, okay, well where's other people? So now we're down to three. Now I know where one guy is because I've sort of been using him. He's g getting some kills, but um, I've stayed out of his line of sight by using the trees. Now I see him move down. I use the tree. I move up to see where this guy goes. And I take him down right there. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to look at a mistake that the last guy makes. So now we're down to heads up, and we're going to rewind it real quick. Nope. All right, well, the guy in the tunnel ends up being the last guy. So you're going to end up seeing it from his perspective, and you're going to see the mistake that he makes. And it's a common mistake, and it's one I've been guilty of a million times. Um and you'll see it here in a second now that guy saw me and now he sees me and now there's down to two okay this guy knows where I'm at he knows where I'm at he could hear the gunshots he saw me move behind that tree he keeps looking at this tree and look what he ends up doing now here's the other thing let's pay attention right down here this is the circle now this guy is trying to move up into the circle now where I'm positioned I'm gonna have to get into the circle but I also knew from earlier when inception killed the other guy that whoever it was was down in this area so I know that this guy is not on my right I know he's not ahead of me I know he's on my left I know because that's where the gunshots were this guy Maybe he didn't see me get behind the tree, but he should have heard the gunshots. So if you hear the gunshots, you got to go with your gut instinct. And his gut was right. And it's a mistake that people make is they go against their gut. They, they know the answer, but they still don't believe it. So now this guy is looking in every single direction trying to find me, not knowing where I'm at. And the truth is, he knew where I was the whole time. He just didn't trust his gut so when your gut is telling you this is where somebody's at you go with your gut feeling and if you end up being wrong you're wrong but more often than not you are going to be right so 
Okay, guys, that is going to be it for these two games. Um, I hope I give you a little bit of strategy and sort of how I play it, um, the way that I try to position myself, uh, and all that jazz. So I'm going to put up more of these uh, chicken dinner uh, videos uh, with just my style of play, and that's the thing. Just keep in mind, guys, this is my style. This is how I do it. I'm not saying that this is how you're supposed to play the game. I'm not saying that my method is the best. This is the method that allows me to have the most fun for me and if this ends up being something that like helps you if you're just like wanting to get some chicken dinners you know playing solo because this strategy won't really work a hundred percent uh with uh duos and de definitely not with squads uh, with squads you're just dealing with too many people so anyway that's going to be it so thank you so much guys and uh we will see you next time